Folks, what I have in front of me are two identical Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X laptops. And I mean identical, with the only difference being the price. So one has an Intel Core i7 CPU, while the other one has an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU. So that gives us a unique opportunity to compare apples to apples. So with all of these things being equal, what should you buy considering these devices are gonna be hanging around for the rest of the year? Now, I already covered the Intel version of this laptop, which you can find that video right over here. The Pro X itself is probably one of the best thin and light laptops out there right now, regardless whether if it features an Intel CPU or an AMD CPU. Let me explain. While both of these devices weigh around 3.2 pounds, they feature H-series processors that run between 35 to 45 watts instead of the usual 10 to 28 watt ultra low power CPUs we get in these kinds of form factors. So you're certainly getting a lot of power in a thin chassis. On one hand, we have a Ryzen 9 6900HS CPU with 16 threads. And on the other hand, we have a Core i7 12700H with 20 threads. Now in these particular configs, the AMD laptop has twice the memory compared to the Intel model, which uh, is an option that you can customize as well. Uh, but the memory on this is also running at a whopping 6,400 megahertz. And both of them sport NVIDIA's RTX 3050 GPUs. Now from the outside, these are both exactly the same chassis with the same styling and build quality. The AMD version comes in onyx gray, while the Intel version comes in what they call ultimate gray though I would just call it silver. Even the displays are exact replicas, guys. They feature a gorgeous 3K high resolution panel with a 120 hertz refresh rate. So if you're into creator focused tasks or even a bit of gaming, these have you covered. Plus they feature 16 by 10 aspect ratios. So nothing really to complain here. I guess the only real benefit with the Intel laptop is a faster IO uh, since you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports with data transfer speeds up to 40 gigabits per second compared to USB 3.2 Gen 2 at 10 gigabits per second. And you get an HDMI 2.1 port on Intel, but that's been replaced with a USB type A port on AMD. Either way, you pretty much get everything that you possibly need for ports. Whoa, dude, that was so rich last night. You went to the ridge? Of course, I had a secret code. What is it? It was rich. That's rich, man. That's rich. Wait a second, is that a ridge? Yep. Didn't have to go anywhere last night. Dude, that's so rich. An evolution in slim towers designed to fit your space for gaming or entertainment, standing tall or laying flat with powerful fans to scare the heat, a Gen 4 riser cable is included so you can find your own balance. That's rich for you. The talk of the town. Bridget below. Now, what about pricing? Because <laughs> that's one of the main factors that will probably lead you down either the Intel or AMD path. So the Slim 7 Pro X starts around $1,400, and that gets you a Ryzen 7 6800HS, but our sample with the Ryzen 9 and upgraded storage and memory costs about $1,800. The Slim 7i Pro X only comes with the Core i7 CPU, which is what we have over here, and it costs you about $1,600, but if you upgrade the memory and storage, the AMD laptop is $5 more expensive than the Intel model. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, right? So with that out of the way, let's get into performance. And I'm gonna kick things off with the way how power is being handled by the CPUs and GPUs. And right off the bat, they are pretty interesting since the 12700H version gets fed more juice in intelligent and battery saving modes, while the 6900HS has an edge in extreme. Either way, extreme mode has the temperatures go right up close to each CPU's thermal limit, while the other modes are a lot better managed. But let's look beyond that comparison for a second because the extreme performance mode has a power level that I usually see on a legit gaming laptop and not a thin and light device that's only 0.63 inches thick. Lenovo has really beefed up the cooling system for this generation, guys. So the Pro X is able to handle this heat load without ever reaching the 100 degree mark. Even when gaming at maximum power, these laptops don't get overly hot, but it does start hitting some elevated noise levels. The RTX 3050 being able to pull up to 50 watts or more means it should be very competitive with other laptops that feature higher end RTX 3050 Ti GPUs at lower power levels, especially on the Intel side, since it gets fed a bit more power. The noise levels between these two laptops is pretty much identical, though I will say the Intel system is just a bit quieter in the highest performance mode. Either way, both Pro Xs are some of the quietest laptops we've tested in a while, uh, except when you're running them in extreme performance modes. So that's as a stage for battery life, which has always been a strength of AMD laptops. But this time, 
we have a roll reversal. While both of these Slim 7i Pro X models have the exact same 71-hour battery, we actually got a better result on the Intel Alder Lake base model. Now, is this a freak accident or the start of a new pattern? But for real, guys, getting almost 10 hours of battery is pretty excellent. The Flow X13 blows everything else out of the water, despite having the same AMD processor and a smaller battery than this laptop. But um, we think Asus might be doing some magic optimizations in the background. Switching to something more intensive and, okay, wow, <laughs> that's the type of AMD battery life results that we love to see. The reason that this AMD model gets way better numbers than its twin is because the Intel chip is being fed 40% more power while running in the same power mode. Basically, it's a trade-off between better performance versus better endurance. So that's a beautiful transition into the most important comparison for this video, the benchmarks or the performance. AMD versus Intel in an identical chassis and running at very similar power levels. That's pretty crazy and quite a unique opportunity for us. So we basically set a threshold of 50 decibels for our testing, and thankfully, both laptops ran under that in their extreme performance modes. Um, we also sprinkled in a handful of other laptops, all featuring RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti GPUs for this comparison. So starting off with Cinebench, single core is where the AMD model takes its biggest loss. The Ryzen 6000 series just can't compete with all the late chips, guys, when it comes to single core performance. It just loses in both IPC and the frequency. The situation isn't amazing in Cinebench multi-threaded either, because right away, you can see the benefits of that 14-core Intel chip that has over the 8-core Ryzen chip. However, the only difference is about 9%, and as you will see in some of the other benchmarks, the difference is never that large again in longer tests. In fact, as we go through the charts, you can see how amazingly similar both laptops perform, sometimes with half a percent separating them, and sometimes with the Ryzen model even winning, like in Maya, which is our longest test. Overall though, when you take the Slim 7 Pro X's super compact footprint into account, it's actually pretty competitive against larger laptops like the XPS 15 and the Acer Nitro 5. But compactness does come at a price though, guys, and the Pro X series does tend to get a bit more expensive than some of the others in the charts. Now, DaVinci Resolve's performance is pretty much in line with our expectations since both laptops share an identical GPU operating at a similar power level. Adobe Premiere Pro, on the other hand, sees this AMD model fall behind, but that's only because it lacks the quick sync feature of the Intel chip. The 6900HS does have built-in integrated graphics too, but it hasn't received the same level of love and attention from Adobe. So the discrete GPU has to do all the work. Now, speaking of that RTX 3050, while these are the lowest end of the RTX 3000 mobile family, it is still infinitely more powerful than the integrated GPUs found on either of these CPUs. So don't expect to play any games at the native 3K resolution, but gaming at 1080p on these 120 hertz displays isn't a bad experience. The GPU's four gigabytes of VRAM is definitely a limitation, but you will generally run out of GPU power before hitting that VRAM bottleneck. So with basically identical GPUs, it is no surprise to see the Intel model post better frame rates across the board. The Alder Lake architecture is quite a bit newer than the one found in the Ryzen 6000 chips, and it just rocks in gaming, guys. Plus, there's that extra four watts of power. Compared to the competition, though, this high wattage RTX 3050 is putting up a very good fight against the RTX 3050 Ti's, except in the Nitro 5. That one is just untouchable since it's a legit full-size gaming laptop. By the way, we definitely recommend gaming with headphones or earbuds in because this laptop almost hits 50 decibels in extreme performance mode, so it's not super pleasant to your ears. But sadly, it's the only way to get a really acceptable gaming experience. You only lose about one quarter of your GP performance if you switch to intelligent cooling mode. So this was a really interesting opportunity for us to test two totally different mobile CPUs in one identical laptop, especially with an identical GPU as well. And honestly, the results were way closer than I would have thought uh, so ultimately, my decision would come down to price. You see, as config, this AMD model is sold by Lenovo for about $16, $75, while the Intel version is $5 cheaper, which is it's pretty crazy. You never hear that from an Intel versus AMD laptop conversation. Personally, we wouldn't actually buy either of these at those prices. But when discounted price return, and if the price difference is drastic, where the AMD version is cheaper, 
that's what I would get. The slightly better gaming results and few instances of superior 2D performance aren't worth that much of an Intel price premium. Now, if both of these laptops were priced the same, which they are at the time of making this video, I would pick the Intel model simply because it seems to be getting better battery life, and that's one of the cornerstones of a Thinalite laptop in the first place. So on that note, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you're able to take away something from this video. It is an interesting comparison, something unique that we haven't actually got to test out, uh, an AMD versus Intel, same laptop, same GPU. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys think about in the comments. Uh, which one would you pick and why? Well, I'm gonna peace out and spend responsibly, folks.